lungs to sing once again. I will praise Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear. Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Good evening everyone, welcome to day three of our time spent this week at Maranatha Camp looking at the fruit of the Spirit. We're looking at how Paul, one of Jesus' closest followers, describes the life of a Christian, how a follower of Jesus lives his or her life as God's Holy Spirit grows these things in our lives and in our hearts. On day one, if you remember, we looked at love and how we are to love others like God has loved us, sacrificially forgiving one another in the same way that God has sacrificially forgiven us. And then yesterday, we looked at joy, which is a, a deep steadiness, a deep hope and a deep gladness that keeps us going, keeps us trusting in God through all of life's ups and downs. And tonight we're on to our third part of the fruit and we're going to be looking at peace. I looked up the 
BBC website earlier on today and all that I could see from top to bottom of the page was war. War is a common theme in our lives and war is a common theme in our country and war is a common theme across the world. We see horrible, horrible footage on the news of towns and countries in the Middle East and elsewhere that are totally ravaged by war. Human beings and families that need food, children that need rescue, it's, it's awful, it's genuinely terrible, it's horrible to see. Cities are destroyed, jobs are destroyed, lives are destroyed. There doesn't seem to be any hope of peace for any of these people. And even if we do somehow create peace in these places, it never really seems to stick. It only ever seems to last for a short while. It seems much more like a dream than anything else. But on the news website I was looking at earlier, there are lots of, of other wars going on too at the moment. There are political wars going on between groups. There's war on racism. There's war on inequality, there's a war on illnesses, and there's a whole other list of things that seem to be fighting back. We can't really seem to fight them off or to put an end to them. We can make progress, but again, it only seems to last a short while before something else goes wrong. Or there's another issue, more war. And I wonder if we'll ever really see peace in any of these areas that I've just mentioned. But there's one more war to mention, and it is a really, really important one. And it's not one that I found on the BBC website, but it is one that you'll see in the Bible. I mentioned a few times over the past few days that humanity has rejected God, and he calls that sin. It means that there is a broken relationship between us and the God who created us. Actually, God says that humanity's natural tendency is to reject him, to ignore him, to ignore his offer of love. And if you've ever wanted to be friends with somebody and your friendship has been rejected, you know how much that hurts. And if you've ever loved two people who fight one another, Again, you will know how much that hurts. And so now imagine how much it hurts God when we are at war with him, when we reject his offer of friendship. And imagine how much it hurts God to see us at war with one another, despite the fact that he loves us very, very much. But we read that God is a just God. He's a fair God. And the Bible makes it very clear that because of our sins against him, because we turn away from him in rebellion, God and humanity are enemies. That's how we're described. Enemies. It's a strong word, isn't it? And as God's enemies, we are in big trouble. We're facing separation from him forever. And so humanity desperately needs peace. Peace in our world, peace between individuals, peace between countries. And we desperately, desperately need peace between us and the God who made us. Now this is where the good news of Christianity comes in and sounds so good. Jesus comes along God himself steps down into our world, into our war-torn world and into our war-torn hearts to rescue us from sin, to rescue us from death and to turn us from being God's enemies into being God's children. Jesus dies on the cross in our place, taking God's judgment taking the penalty that we should pay as God's enemies so that we don't need to and so that we never will need to and so that we never will. 
if you've got a Bible there, then turn with me to Romans chapter 5. And if you don't know where that is in your Bibles, that is okay. The contents page at the front of the Bible is your friend. Uh, Romans chapter 5, if you've got it on an app, or if you're uh, opening up a tab, then it'll be dead easy to find. But Romans chapter 5, I'm just going to read the first verse of that chapter. It says this. Therefore, since we have been justified, and that word just means that God the judge says that we're not guilty anymore. Since we have been justified, since we have been declared not guilty through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. See the wonderful good news there? We have been cleared of our sins. We are no longer enemies of God. Peace. And the letter that Paul writes to the church in Rome, the letter of Romans, goes on to say that we go from being enemies of God to friends, sons, daughters, beloved children. And actually some of you might know about Jesus' first words to his disciples when he comes back from the dead and he goes and meets them as a gathered group. His first words to the gathered group of disciples are, peace be among you. He's just come back from the dead. The disciples are a little bit frightened. So Jesus is saying, calm down, I'm not a ghost. We're all good. But his words of peace are so much greater than just calm down. Jesus is talking about a peace between God and everyone who was his enemy, but now trusts in him. Jesus is talking about an end to the war between sinful, rebellious humanity and a good and just God. And so as Christians, we are children of peace. We are children of the God who has restored and fixed the broken relationship between us and him. And so this means that if you're a Christian, if you're a follower of Jesus, you now take that message of peace with you wherever you go. So back in, in Roman times, 2000 years ago, when two armies were at war with one another and one of those armies won, somebody from that army would run around all the towns nearby, run around all the cities, shouting loudly about the victory so that everyone would know so that everyone would hear about it. Well, the war between Jesus and sin, the war between Jesus and death has been won by Jesus. And so peace with God is now available through Jesus. And that means I don't need to worry anymore about my relationship with God. I know that I have peace with him if I have placed my trust in him and asked him for forgiveness and I know that I will have that peace with him not just until I make another mistake or sin again but I have that peace with him forever and if you're a Christian listening this evening the spirit God's spirit is producing that peace in your heart you live as peacemakers you speak to different people about the, the God that you love and how he has won you speak about the, the offer that he makes, the good news that he shares. And you say to people that actually you don't need to carry on living as one of God's enemies anymore. Because of Jesus, you can live a life of peace. Peace with him. With the promise of an eternity with him. On a new earth. Free from sin. Free from evil. Free from death. And so if I'm, if I'm worried about whether or not I really am a Christian because I, I just keep on sinning and I just keep on messing up, actually I can listen to those words that Jesus spoke to his followers. Peace be among you. And I can think, no, actually everything is good. Everything is okay. Because I have peace with God through Jesus.
or if I'm worried about what I see on the news, if I'm worried about these wars and, and wars between people and countries, if I think to myself, when will they ever end? If they just seem endless, I can think, no, actually, everything is good. Everything is okay. Because one day God will intervene and he will put it to a stop forever. These are things that are always worth thinking about and thanking God for. See, God ends the war between us and him. And he says that he will bring all wars to an end one day. God teaches us that humanity, human beings, you and me, we are made in his image. Humanity has a, a dignity to it, a, a value to it. And that's why Christians, amongst others, but that's why Christians believe in protecting human life wherever and whenever we can. It's why you often see Christians right on the front lines of humanitarian aid or putting an end to slavery, fighting for equality, trying to somehow make a difference in the world, pursuing things like justice. Because the Bible teaches us that humanity is not just a product of chance. We're not just a different type of animal amongst all the other different animals in the world. We're made in the image of a loving and just God who generously gives us peace. Peace with him. And so that's why we also chase these things. Love, justice, peace. Because we're made in his image. And we reflect his desire for these things. So as I wrap up for the evening, if you're listening and you're a Christian, let me ask you this. What does it look like in your life to be a peacemaker? What will it look like for you to live as a peacemaker? Think about all the friends that you know the family members that you know who are still enemies of God in their sin. Or think about the, the wars and the fights that you see just around about you in friendship groups, in school. God has given you peace with him. And he extends that offer out to others as well. So share that offer with others. Talk about the peace that God has given you. And God will one day bring all fighting and wars to an end. So we as his people should always be looking to stop fights and to stop wars whenever we can. Because we're copying the God who will one day do it for good. What will it look like for you to be a peacemaker? What will it look like for the peace that God has given you to shape the words that you say and to shape the things that you do? And if you're not a Christian yet, if you're still listening in and you're not sure, or you're just curious, how do you respond to Jesus' offer of peace with him? It really is the best news that you could ever hear. It's the offer of no longer being God's enemy, but instead being his child, loved by him very, very much, forever. It's the promise of living in a new world, free from all of the fighting, free from all of the war that haunts us in this world. And you can be there if you place your faith and trust in him, enjoying peace with him and peace with one another forever. That is the good news of the gospel. That is the good news that Jesus came to share. I'm going to stop there and I'm going to pray and then we'll move on to the next part of the evening. Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful good news of peace that you have given us despite being your enemies through Jesus, your son. And Father, we pray that you would help us as we respond to this good news of peace by living lives of peace with one another, enjoying the peace that we know with you and then sharing this wonderful offer of peace with anyone who will listen. Father, thank you that when we look at the world around about us and we look at our own hearts, we 
don't need to despair, we don't need to panic, but we can remember the peace that you have offered us and help us, Father, to live in a way that shows how good it is to know you and to know the peace that you give us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.
was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn Till I met I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I met Citizen of heaven 